Pat McAfee reacts to Anthony Richardson. This pick was bananas in pajamas. So uh, this was one of the biggest shocks of the draft for me was Anthony Richardson going fourth to the Colts. Uh, we had heard that Colt, the Colts were in love with Will Levis. Chris Ballard, uh, the GM, is going to talk about the picks. I'm very interested to see what he has to say about this. Obviously, he's going to talk glowingly, which whatever. But I just want to hear if he if he kind of goes into their process and how they evaluated uh, the quarterback. I want to take a trip back in time. A month and a half ago, two months ago, you were asked about potentially having to move out of four to move up to get the guy that you like. You said with your Southern draw, I don't think we have to go anywhere to get the guy that I like. (laughs) Has it been Anthony Richardson this whole time? And why was it Anthony Richardson, Chris? Yeah, we've been dialed in on him for a while. If Richardson was their guy, which obviously I guess it was, then Chris is 100% right. Like, Richardson was never going in the top three. So... Yeah, I mean, I think he played, and I, that is part of what I think the draft is all about, is figuring out what teams around you are going to do. If you think uh, that, man, there was a trade last night where I was confused by it because I didn't think that the spot they moved up to, any of the teams were going to take the player. Damn, I wish I could remember who it was. But, um, you know, Ballard, if that's the case, Ballard played this perfectly. And, um, it, look, we're betting on on what we think he can become. And... He's a he's a physical freak in terms no of his ability to run and throw. He's a big, strong man. And then the more time we spent with him, you know, we just thought that you know what he is he is going to really grow because he's smart, he cares, and he wants to be good, and all those things. I don't have a problem with the Richardson thing at all. I mean, a lot of people you know throw this stuff around like Richardson's a project. I, I've said that, and he is a project for sure. But all the quarterbacks are a project. All the quarterbacks in this draft are a project for sure. Unless you have someone like Andrew Luck, you know, Trevor Lawrence even to to an extent where it's just a n- no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like that, you, you get a chance at him, you got to take him. But Will Levis is a project. Hendon Hooker is a project. C.J. Stroud is a project. Bryce Young is a, str- a project. Anthony Richardson is a project. So if you feel like you're taking the project with the highest ceiling, which honestly Richardson probably is. Richardson probably is the highest ceiling quarterback. And if you if he is a bust, so be it. There's a great chance all of them will be busted. You know, like how the the amount of quarterbacks drafted that end up being really good, specifically drafted in the top the first round, is very small, right? There's busts everywhere. So you can't have the fear of a player being a bust, if you think their ceiling is through the roof, which Richardson's ceiling probably is, could he become Cam Newton? Sure. He, he certainly could. He has the physical attributes. If he can put it all together, he absolutely could be Cam Newton. No doubt about it. So if you think, hey, we got a chance at that, no, none of the other quarterbacks are really separated, take him. Look, is it going to be? is it going to be pretty early? Probably not. But we'll work through it and let his talent come to life at some point. Do you think that Jalen Hurts' success with Steichen was immediately the reason why Anthony or yeah Richardson becomes the guy for us? Was that a big part of the factor? How much did Steichen have say in this? And at what point, when you had him in your building, because I got a chance to chat with you, you said uh, you don't like the combine, you don't like the pro days, you like when they're in your building because you can put a little heat on them. At what point did you know he was your guy, and how much did Steichen have to play with this? Great question, and I would assume a lot because if if, if you know if, if you bring Steichen in, and he says. Listen, I want to replicate what I just did in Philadelphia. You're not going to go get him, you know, Bryce Young. You're not going to go get him a guy who can't do those things. So the fact that he, if he thinks, look, Anthony Richardson, I may be able to do in a in a year, a little bit here, I, I may be able to do what I did with Jalen Hurts. Then if you're Chris Ballard, you have to trust him. You have to trust your coach. You brought your coach in. You brought him in because of his scheme, because of how he sees the team, because of how he sees the game. So you have no choice but to say, okay. Well, of course, Shane, look, I mean, anytime you're drafting a quarterback, and especially with an offensive head coach, they got to buy into what they can do with them and how they can fit the offense to them. 
and I think it was the best thing in Shane's career. You know, think about it. He went from Philip Rivers, who's brilliant and, and a great pocket passer to Herbert. Um, and then the Jalen Hurts. So he's had to adjust to three different players. And I just remember when he first started, I mean, he wasn't two weeks on the job, and he calls me in his office. He says, my Lord. I said, what? He goes, I am watching this kid. He had about 10 cut-ups of Anthony, and he said, Chris, I, there's not many guys that can do the things he can do. And he goes, I think we can do some real fun things with him on offense. Yeah, Exactly. Now, let me say this, and I'm not trying to say that I know the game more than Shane Steichen, but I do think the whole, the, as far as the like public, when you're seeing Anthony Richardson throwing the ball 70 yards in the pro days, and you're seeing him doing backflips, and you're seeing him hitting the roof, you got to throw all that shit out. I, if, if I honestly, and I said this when it happened, I think I, I think I made a video on this. If I was there at his pro day, and he drops back to throw a deep ball and he hits the roof, I'm probably leaving. Because I'm thinking, I want my quarterback to be accurate, and this guy's hitting the building. This guy's hitting sides of the building. He's trying to throw his receivers. Now, you could also argue maybe he was told to do that, you know, maybe show it off. He knew it would be a viral clip. Who the hell knows? I would hope so. Because if, if I'm concerned about my quarterback throwing go routes, and those go routes are going to scrape the roof, that's not great for me. So... I'm assuming Steichen is not just watching pro day clips, highlight tapes, things like that. I'm sure he's a little bit more uh, technical in what he's looking at, uh, but you know, makes sense. And look, look at how about uh, Chris Bowers ham hock here? Was this guy a Golden Glove boxer? Look at this, look at this bear paw. Let's go! Hey, I'm pumped to hear that. Wow! I just renewed my suite for six figures. Boom. We're gonna be in there. It's gonna be a lot. a boy. Hey, I'm gonna be Atta there. a boy. I'm a season ticket holder. <laughs> I'm gonna be there. It's gonna be electrifying. AJ has something for you, Chris. Chris, were you surprised to see what happened right in front of you with Houston getting the second and coming back and, and taking the third pick too in front of you? Well, I was, I was. I mean, look. I mean, Houston got a. They got two really good football players, so but I'm not going to lie. I was happy it was Houston because I knew they weren't going to take a quarterback. <laughs> okay, so... Do yeah, I guess that part... But you wonder the call because I wonder if Arizona tells Houston, like, look, we're fielding calls from whoever, Tennessee, and they're going to jump up and, and do this. You know, because like, I wonder... Because obviously Indy, at that point, like, they're not interested in moving around. So, and Houston's not going to take, obviously, Stroud and, and uh, Richardson. So there's no reason, I mean, uh, Stroud and, yeah, Stroud and, and Richardson. So there's no real reason for Houston to move ahead of uh, Indy there. I, 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 want, I, God, I wish I knew the calls. Like, you never know the calls. You never know, like, what the backdoor um, situations are. Like, who, who all was calling for the three? Who all was calling for that? Because if you think about it, so Arizona is at three. They probably, they probably would have taken, they probably would have taken Will Anderson if they if they sat there with the pick. So Houston's thinking we want Anderson, right? And so they're going to try and move to get him, which makes sense. But then you got to think: Are any other teams wanting to move up simultaneously to take another player? And then if Anderson's there at four, the Colts are going to take Richardson. Like, let's say, I'm just going to make something up, but let's say um, Seattle moves to three to take Levis, okay? So then it's like, all right, Anderson doesn't go four, then five, I guess Arizona would be there. And then they, it's just nuts how that works out. Like, And we will never know. We will never know the chess match between the GMs calling to make trades for different players with the same team. It's, it's just, that's what makes the draft so great is the strategy behind it with all these teams and it all has to happen in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Did you hear about Tennessee potentially trading up and you're just kind of sitting, waiting, kind of playing it out or what was the anxiety yeah. at three whenever it came up in the room? I'll never forget listening to your show one time. I can't remember who you were talking to and you kept telling him, hold, hold, hold. hold. But see, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like if you're, if you're Indy, and you're sitting there, you're thinking, okay, Arizona isn't going to take Richardson if they want Richardson the whole time. But they're thinking there's about eight other teams that could trade up for this. Then you hear there's a trade, and you're like, oh, shit. Then you would assume Chris Ballard's thinking, 
we've got to make a call. Whoever, whatever happens, or or did or did Arizona? Did someone tell Ballard? Like, did someone tell Ballard? Like, hey, Arizona's talking with Houston, and then he's thinking, okay, who gives a shit? But he may he may have heard, hey, Arizona's talking to Tennessee, and they're talking to Houston, and then and then he's got to be thinking, well, it, I need to call Tennessee, you know, because if Tennessee gets to three, and you're scared they're going to take Richardson, and you want him, like that that's just nuts. <laughs> And I just, we just said, I just said, look, we're just going to hold. We're just going to hold. That's all you can do, really. And hopefully this thing works out the way we want it to work out. Hey, we're proud of you, man. Yeah, I mean, at that point, like, you almost can't overthink it. You almost have to have a backup plan. You know, like, if 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 Ballard, it, let's say he sees Tennessee jump up and Tennessee is at three, he's got to be thinking, all right, well, I'm either we're either taking Richardson or we're taking Levis or whatever. Like, you're, you're thinking, okay. We got to have plan A, plan B. That's all we can do. We can't worry about, we can't make a huge trade like this in the next 10 minutes, you know, with, with no leverage at all in the division, all that stuff. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I would love to be in a, in a war room, like not, not to watch, but I would love to be in a war room for a draft to like legit see what's going on and to hear the conversations, to see the phone calls, to see the trade, you know, oh, it'd be so much fun. Uh, that, that would be, I can't even imagine the feeling of draft night you're put so much time and i mean like i said i don't mean watching it i mean like as a gm as a front office person as a coach as an owner the amount of time you put into it what it all means for your team what it all means for your franchise it means stuff from ticket sales to you know prime time games to jerseys you're going to sell like everything all within 20 minutes you, you can do all the work just like just like Ballard was talking about you know they can do all the work all through the combine all through the pro days all through the interviews they can love Richardson and then boom there could be a trade Arizona trades with Tennessee Tennessee takes Richardson all of a sudden all that prep all that planning all everything goes up in smoke and you got to figure out well shit what do we do now you know what now all those jerseys we were going to sell all those season tickets we were going to sell with Richardson's face on the box you know like Who's that become? Does that become Will Levis? Does that become Hendon Hooker? Like who, 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 what, what uh, route does that take the franchise? And you're thinking about all these enormous decisions in 10 minutes. Nuts, man. The draft is so unique, but a uh, wild move from, from the Colts. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what they do at Richardson. If it was me, y'all know how I feel about quarterbacks. I would, I would come out immediately and be like, look, he ain't playing for at least 10 games. He's not playing for, we don't plan for him to play the season. We're, we're going to let whoever run the offense and we're going to let Richardson sit. And then it's going to be his team next year. I, I would come out and say it and let Richardson develop, you know, give him every chance he's got and, and then go from there, but it'll be fun to watch. So good, good stuff here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. Uh, were you surprised by the pick? Do you think he'll be good? Do you think Richardson will be bad? Uh, what do you think the ceiling is? All that stuff. Let me know. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.